Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank the organizers for, for this year opportunity. Um, let, me, let me start. Um, up. Okay, so intermittent motion in biological system. Um, in physics and particularly in active matter, we tend to think of self-propelled entities, including biological one as continuously moving particles. And, but if you think of, I mean, in terms of locomotion of animals and organism in general, it's not a continuous process and typically it's an intermittent one. And this uh, in the figure is a kind of illustration. You see one individual, let's suppose an animal that is moving at some point stops because need to rest, feed, check for predators or look for food, and then it's going to move again and so on. So basically this is in general an intermittent uh, behavior. Motion is intermittent in general, and that applies as well for groups, not only individuals. And um, today uh, we will study or I will show you intermittent motion in E. coli and sheep, and I will discuss how using the same mathematical framework we, we can describe these two very different biological systems. Okay, so I start with bacteria. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Escherichia coli, but um, I'm, I'm going to show you data about this particular strain that is the Enterhemorrhagic Escherichia coli, which is a, a serious pathogen. And we are going to see how these guys uh, move near the surface. And, and, and first, what I'm showing you, uh, what I'm going to show first is how they move near the surface without performing any addition to the surface. And this is what you observe. Basically, uh, these um, bacteria, what they do is they move in circles. This is what you can see here. This is due to hydrodynamics. Hydrodynamic uh, interactions um, basically push the bacterium towards the surface and also forces uh, the bacterium to move in, in circles. Now, if you think that something of interest is sitting on that surface, let's suppose, uh, I don't know, a food patch or a cell that eventually the bacterium could infect, this way of moving, I mean, moving in circles, doesn't sound a very efficient way of exploring the surface. However, if you look at this, uh, this pathogen on moving on a glass surface, in fact, what you more often observe is that they perform and stop events. That is what I'm going to show you next. And you will see that in the, this stop events allows the bacterium basically to reset, to escape from these circular trajectories by setting a new direction of motion. That is what you are going to see here. There is a stop, has reset the direction of motion, and now it's in another circle, but managed again to reset and, 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 and basically gets trapped again in this circular orbit, but it's going to perform another stop event and by doing that, we will see later that they manage to explore in a more efficient way a surface. So now, if because they are performing stops on the surface, now if you look at the speed as function of time, this is what you can see here. Basically, the speed is low, they goes up, I mean, low again, and so on. So if you take an histogram of the speed of uh, this um, bacteria, Basically, what you would observe is this. Basically, that the speed distribution is bimodal. And now what we can make use of this, and we can define this local minimum. We make use of the local minimum to define a threshold. And we are going to say when, whenever the bacterium is moving at speed that is below that threshold, that is in a stop uh, regime, and when it's above that threshold, we are going to say that is in a running regime or phase. Why we want to do that? Because we want to study the statistics of these times. And, and this is what I'm showing you here. So this is the statistics of the run times and of the stop times. This is what you see in, in this panel. This is log lean. Uh, this is uh, in, in cumulative distribution. That means, for example, if you pick up any point in here, this is in the stop times. That would tell you the probability of observing a stop time that is um, larger than with the value in the x-axis, or equal, right? Larger or equal to, to this value. 
So what you can see here is that the uh, runtime is, is, is a straight line or can be described reasonably well with a straight line, which means that it's an exponential. But the distribution of stop times is, is not a straight line and it's not then an exponential. So let's suppose that we try to um, describe this observation using a two-state Markov chain. That sounds reasonable since we have the stop state and the moving state and two transition between these two. However, if you do that, the problem is that basically you will get um, an exponential for the distribution of run times, but you will also get an exponential for the distribution of stop times. And we, we are observing here that it is not an exponential. So what can we do? I mean, and there is a, a possibility still using a Markov chain formalism that is to assume that we don't have a two state, but three states. And two of these states is going to be associated to the uh, stop phase or stop regime. And one is going to be associated to the moving regime. But one fair question would be to ask oneself, what are these states associated to this stop phase, right? I mean, we, we, we don't have just one, we have two. So what are these states? And in order to, to clarify that, we went back to the experiments and we started to look at what happens with the bacterium was in what we were initially called the stop regime. And in the stop regime often was not what we were expecting and bacteria were doing this. As you can see, what, what is happening is the bacterium is getting feathered to the surface and performing this rotation, um, which, is, which is quite uh, common in experiments with bacteria, with tethered bacteria to the surface. And that led us basically to, to define the following stage. Two is running. We are going to associate it to, to running. One is when the bacterium is in this state and zero means that the bacterium is performing uh, no, no motion and no rotation as this one. Okay, so having a, a definition of each of these states, now what you can do is basically you can compute for how long the bacterium is in each of these states, state zero, one, and two. And this is what you can see here, again, is in the survival curve associated to these times. Um, and what you can also compute is the probability of going from zero to one, zero to two, one to zero, one to two, and so on. That is what you see in this panel. Now, if you know this measurement, how long is in each of these states, as well as the probability of from going from zero to one, zero to two, and so on, you can compute all transition rates in the Markov chain. And this is what you obtain. I mean, you have uh, four transitions that are different from zero and, um, and this circuit. Now that we know how, how we can describe the, this transition from different states for, for, for a bacterium, now what we want to do is to plug this in in an equation of motion. Basically, what we want to use is this knowledge to describe how uh, bacteria move near the surface. And, and then we are going to describe the bacterium as an active chiral particle, but experiencing behavioral shift. How we are going to do that? So the equation of motion is given by these two equations. One is related to the update of the position of the bacterium, and the other is the update of the moving direction of the bacterium. Let me skip the details. So you have these two equations. There's a bunch of an equations. What is important to realize here is that you have that this, this um, equation, this launch of an equation depends on this IT. IT is the behavioral state that takes values zero, one, or two. And there are functions in here that depends on the value of IT, like the speed or the value of omega. So depending on which behavioral state will be affecting this, this equation. Now, how can we describe how, how bacteria move using this type of equation? That sounds at first glance that the only option is to perform simulations, but likely one can do some analytics here. You can try to describe what happens with these guys in terms of the probability of finding the bacterium in a state i in position x moving in direction theta at time t. And you can derive equations for these probabilities. And, and if you try to do that, you are going to end up writing a forward cosmograph equation with transition terms, which is the system of equations I'm showing you here. And if you do the math associated to this system of equations, you can obtain the diffusion coefficient of the bacterium. 
And this diffusion coefficient, what that is the, the, what one needs to remember, depends on the topology of the Markov chain that we have seen before, as well as on the actual uh, values of the transition rates. And um, okay. So now let me show you the behavior of the diffusion coefficient as function of one of these transition rates. This is the, the transition rate to zero. I mean, this is the, the transition rates that tell you how you go from state two to state zero. And this transition rate is the one that controls the average runtime. So it's the one that is controlling the runtime of, uh, of the bac bacterium. There are two limits that are easy to understand. On one hand, what you have is here is when this K to zero is, is zero, meaning that the uh, bacterium is, is not performing any stop event. If the bacterium is not performing any stop event, then it's trapped in these circular orbits. And because these orbits, the circular orbits are, are noisy, you have a non-zero diffusion coefficient uh, but the diffusion coefficient is not too large. On the other hand, if K20 um, is too large, that means whenever you start moving, you quickly will perform a stop, then you barely move and the diffusion coefficient is, is very, very low. And as you can see, there is an intermediate value, an optimal value, that is the value that maximizes the diffusion coefficient. And what is interesting is that um, this um, Escherichia coli, the entomologic ones that we are looking at, they operate at this optimal frequency that maximizes the diffusion coefficient. That may look like a coincidence, but we look at other bacteria and on different surfaces. And for the bacteria that perform stops, transient stops on the surface, we found that it seems that all of them operate at the optimal frequency um, that, that comes from, from this model. Okay, um, an important observation here, what I'm, 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 I'm showing you is the diffusion coefficient as function of this transition rate to zero. These colors correspond of different values of the, this KST, which is a combination um, of, of, transition, of the other transition rate, other than the, the transition rate to zero. And as you can see, the different color curves, not all of them has a local maximum. Uh, the violet one or the green one, they don't have. So the take home message from this is that depending on the properties of the bacterium adhesin and surface, transient and addition events enhance the diffusion coefficient of the bacterium, but not always. And in particular, what you have is for these curves, you have that either the, the addition to the surface is very weak or very strong, in which case, you cannot uh, increase the diffusion coefficient by performing stop events. It's either the, the other way around. Stop events are detrimental in the sense that will not lead to a larger diffusion coefficient. Okay, so the summary of this part is that bacteria explore surfaces by performing transient addition events, at least the, for, for the ones that we have explored. And, and I have also shown you that there exists an optimal stop frequency that maximizes the diffusion coefficient. And finally, the third point is a bit uh, speculative. Uh, that is that perhaps, that is, um, I mean, just uh, an idea, that perhaps the bacteria have evolved to, 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 um, to become optimal surface explorer rather than very good 3D swimmers. But that is, again, a speculation. Okay, now, um, just to tell you what we are doing right now, right now we are looking at how bacteria, pathogenic bacteria search for hot cells, host cells that they uh, invade. This is been, for this experiment is for salmonella and we have a recent paper um, on, on that. Okay, I, I, I move on to experiments with sheep. Um, these are experiment with a group of four individuals. This is in a square arena of 50 meter by 50 meter. And I, what I want you to focus on here is I want you to pay attention to, to the fact that um, this, uh, these animals, what we'll be doing is they will be with the head down most of the time and grazing from time to time, you will see that the they go with the head up and so on. And they, they from time to time, they will perform uh, a long 
well, relatively long collective phase. And basically they will stop and they will move. This is what you, I want you to, um, to see in this moment. So as you see, they are not moving much, they are grazing, and now they are going to perform a long uh, displacement, and again, a long displacement, and then they stop. And okay, I'm, I'm going to stop here, the moving. So now we change, we, we are looking at a very different um, biological system, but we can still follow the strategy that we use with, uh, to, to understand the behavior of uh, bacteria. What we are going to do is we are going to look at the speed as function of time of, of this is for one individual, the individual number one. Um, and, and what you can see is that the speed goes again, takes large values, then low values, large values, low values, and, and so on. If you make an histogram of the speed, again, you look at the speed distribution, you find that again is a bimodal distribution. And again, you can use the trick of defining this local minimum to define, I mean, use the local minimum to define a threshold. And we are going to say that when the, the individual moves and a speed that is below that threshold is in a non-moving or stop uh, regime. And when it's above, we are going to say that it's in the moving regime. And you can also use this threshold to, to basically convert this signal in a binary signal. And then with this signal takes value one means, means that we are in the moving phase and with takes value zero means that we are in a non-moving phase. Okay, so now we are going to do something very similar. So what we want to do is to look at the distribution of these times, the times the, the, the one individual is moving and the times that the individual is not moving. And this is what I'm showing you here. This is the distribution of run times. And, um, and as you can see, it is, um, this is lean lean and can be well described by an exponential, but the distribution of stop times um, is not an exponential, rather has a gamma shape. So again, same question, can we understand this using two behavioral states? Um, and the answer is as, as before, no, we cannot, because if we do that, we will get also an exponential for the stop times, and we see that it's not exponential. So can we understand this using a more general Markov chain formalism? And again, the answer will be yes, and with the same trick as uh, we used before, we will use three behavioral states, two of them associated to the stop regime. And if we do that, we can describe basically this type of uh, gamma shape distribution. Now the question is again, what are these state, this, what is this S1 and what is this S2? And, um, and basically here we are going to say that when the ship is with the head down, it's in a state S1, with the ship is not moving, but with the head up, we are going to say that it's in a state S2 and M means that it's running. And again, knowing this, we can compute by following exactly the same protocol as before, all transition rates, and, and basically you get, you obtain the behavior, the, the behavioral transitions of one individual. But here there is something that is different from the experiment we observe with E. coli. Now that what happens, we this is a group of four, and what we can see is that they exhibit a this is for ship one, two, three, and four. And you can see that these individuals exhibit a highly synchronized behavior. Whenever ship one is moving, ship two is moving, three is moving, and four is moving. Basically, they, they, they exhibit almost exactly the same behavior. And so how can we understand that? How, how can we describe this? So if we know how individuals move and, and, and we manage to reproduce the data of an individual, uh, of one individual, now what we need to do is to couple them. And in order to couple them, what we are going to do is we are going to assume that individuals, um, the transition rate depends on the state of neighboring individuals. Now, how can you, I mean, experimentally put in evidence this and how can you, um, obtain the functional form of these transition rates. And, and one possibility is to use trained individuals. These individuals have a vibrating collar. Whenever this collar vibrates, the chip is going to move towards a yellow panel and it's going to do it because it's going to receive a reward. 
And basically the experiment at this, we started with a non-moving group. We are going to call one of these in individuals, I mean the trained individual, that is going to induce the motion of neighboring individuals. And basically the question that we ask ourselves for is for one individual that is behind, what is its probability per time units that remains in this state, state or joins the others? So basically the question is, should I stay or should I go, right? Like with the others. So let me show you an experiment. Um, uh, the experiment, you will see the trained individuals is around here and is going to move towards this panel. This is going to happen soon. Uh, now it's happening. There is the trained individual and everybody is following. And what we do is we compute the time. They, they I mean, till, I mean, the, the time at which they start moving following the trained individual or the others that are in motion, in fact. And by doing this kind of experiments, one can obtain the functional form of this transition rate and put in evidence that, the, um, that it depends on the state of the, the neighbors. So this is what I'm showing you here. And now what we can do is we can plug these transition rates, I mean, this, this uh, our knowledge on how they transition from different uh, behavioral state uh, to fit that, to put it in an equation of motion that describes how they move in space. And basically we will do it in a very similar fashion as we did it with bacteria. And again, this equation of motion is going to depend on the behavioral state. So Five now what you got, yes? Five minutes. Okay, very good. So, uh, here, what you see is in experiments. So this is a way of representing the data. You see this are with the head down and you will see that may have also the head up and they may move or stay. So this is what you see for the experiments. Um, basically they go head up, head down and suddenly you have a collective motion of the group. This is from the experiment. And if you do the, the same with the model I'm showing you, basically you obtain a very similar behavior. So again, you, you see this transition head up, head down and so on, and suddenly you get um, a collective motion phase. Okay, now because you have the model, one can do play a bit with it. In this case, we show that uh, behaves like 1D self-excitable system. And one can do something that is um, interesting. Once we have this model, what we can do is basically not only look at how, how they Ex explore the space, but how they exploit the space. I mean, the surface where they are moving. This is what I'm showing you here. And that you can do with the hope of identifying or, or with the idea of studying whether the strategy that we are observing may represent an optimal strategy in terms of foraging. Okay. So now I, I'm almost coming to, to the end. I hope I have convinced you that we look at bacteria and sheep in a very similar way. Basically what we look is how, how is the speed as function of time in bacteria and sheep. Uh, we use a threshold to define two type of phases or regimes, a regime where the individual is, in, uh, is moving and when the individuals are not moving, we, we use that um, in, in both systems and in both cases, we found that they are involved uh, three behavioral states and, and we use that to establish a Markov chain that we use to fit a model, an equation of motion that describes how individuals move in, in a space, but that depends on the, the, the Markov chain that we analyze in each case. And uh, one, one important difference between bacteria and sheep is that in the case of sheep, transition rates depend on the, the, the state of neighboring individuals. Um, well, now this is just a bit of advertisement of what we are doing right now. We have also now analyzed how, how these individuals move, how they form this, uh, the, how they move in line. And now we know how, how they do it. And we have also studied how they the selection process for, for choosing the leader for, for each collective motion phase. And, and we explored the um, mathematical properties of the, the model that we obtain for how, how they move. And we compare it with the Viction model. 
and they, we put them in the mold in, in the maze and finding that the big shape will not be efficient, but the model for sheep allow you to go from the entrance from the maze till the exit. And we also explore some other mathematical properties as how they do information pooling and how they can exchange private information. This is the, the, the first row is the student that helped me and, and postdocs. Uh, Stefan and Emiliano were involved with the, the experiments and the modeling with bacteria. Luis, Adrian, and Silvan with, with the ones on ship. And these are the, the two senior biologists that help us with all that. This is Dorota Shuruka from Monaco and Richard Bond uh, from Toulouse. And thank you. Thank you very much for such an interesting talk. We have a couple of questions in the chat. I don't think we will get to answer everything. Okay. But. So uh, from Meredith, is it straightforward to identify individual sheep over time from the movies so that you know which sheep is which? And does it matter? I mean, uh, we yes, it, it matters. It's, it's important. And we have done that. Um, and, and yes, we first, you can, in case of sheep, hope that uh, you, you can see here, you can paint them. You probably, you cannot see, but they have even numbers and, uh, or colors, we use different things. But anyway, if you follow the, the movie, I try to show that. You, if you look at one of the guys, suppose I, I put in the, the pointer, I mean, if you go um, frame per, by frame, you, you can easily know who is whom. But on top of that, we use, we do that. We, we put different colors and numbers on them to, to be able to identify them. Okay, so from Rafael Petro, Petrosian. Uh, you use three state mark of shame model for modeling stop time distribution, which was not exponential. Mm -hmm. What other models are possible for stop time distributions? Um, sorry, I lost my, okay. So it's okay. on distribution, which will feed the data and how would you rule them out? Uh, can you go again or it's in the chat, right? It's I'm in the to... chat, yeah. So what other models are possible for stop time distribution, which will feed the data and how would you rule them out? I mean, is is um, that that's a fair question that we we can ask for everything, right? In in life, we we may wonder whether there are other alternatives to describe. I don't know gravitational force or whatever. So, so this is this is this is the best option that we got. But the the use of the Markov chain, the advantage it has is that we don't need to use um, basically a memory kernel or things like that. So if one goes to a different type of models, like with the memory kernel, it is possible that this also, I mean, I, I wouldn't rule out that it's not possible to describe this kind of data. But this is, I mean, this option of what we can ensure is that if you use a Markov chain, you need at least three. That is basically what we are saying. And, and this stands out basically is a way of getting as well as kind of memory in the system. I mean, it's, if you wouldn't, yeah, that, I mean, I, I will stop there, then uh, we can go more in details about that. And often you can rule out these models. And this is something that we did simply by showing that if you enlarge your, your Markov chain or you complicate other models, you typically get more parameters. If you get more parameters, you may easily go into overfitting. If you go into overfitting, I mean, you have uh, criterions like the AKIT that allows you to say, okay, this is this you your the goodness of your fit is not going does not get better, but the number of parameters that you are using is growing. So choose the the mold that okay. is yeah. I yeah. see. Thanks. Thanks for your answer. What I meant, like, could you have maybe just two states and a different like model? But no, maybe we can we discuss it in okay. the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. 